So we've talked about viewport render settings in Substance Painter as well as throwing this in IRA for doing a render. Uh, but let's say you wanted to render this externally. Uh, Substance Painter is pretty well set up for going in here to go File, Export Textures, or Control Shift E, and this will throw you into the export document. And you're going to see up here under Config, uh, I'm not sure what the default is going to be set to, but it looks like maybe PBR Metal Rough. But if you go through here and you scroll through, you're going to see a bunch of different preset settings. And basically, you can set this out to V-Ray, Unity, UE4, and you're going to see these little packed things. So these are, uh, if you go through here to Configuration, and you click through any of these, for example, UE4 Packed, essentially what that's referring to is when you see R, G, and B, these are split out into separate maps. So you're going to take a grayscale map, and you're going to throw it into the red channel, the green channel, or the blue channel of an image. So an image made up of red, green, and blue information. For example, if we go into Photoshop here, I'm just going to open up a live stream thumbnail here. So you're going to see, here's an image. It's an RGB image. We go into here to image mode. It's RGB. It's 8 bits per channel. And if I go into channels over here in Photoshop, you can see here's RGB. It's my red, green, and blue information. I have a red channel that just has the red information, green, and blue information. So each one of these can age information for each of these channels, and then finally, all of them put together make an RGB image. In fact, when you go in here to, like, say, do a levels or control L, you can choose, you can do levels over all of the channels at once, because we have RG and B selected, but you can also just choose the green channel, and you can run a levels on that green channel. Also, you can go into the channel here, and again, just do a hit control L and do a levels on a green channel if you wanted to. Uh, and when we get to normal maps, you'll actually do a thing where uh, you can hit control I on your green channel and you can invert. Of course, with an RGB image, you're going to do some, uh, it's going to look a little bit weird. Uh, but when we get into normal maps, uh, flipping that green channel is going to be something that switches you between DirectX and OpenGL. Anyway, so let's go out of Photoshop here. Uh, but basically, if I have an RGB in image, uh, your base color is going to be an RGB image. So when I export this base color here, and if you want to cycle through these again, if you hit C, that's going to go to your base color. So you're going to see when we export this texture, let's switch this back to 2D only. You see, here's my base color. It's going to have all the information of like any dirt or metal. This is actually a pretty boring base color. Let's switch over to our skull here see if that's any better. Oh boy, not really. Let's go to our teeth. There we go. So here's our base color for our teeth. It's a little bit yellowed. It has a little bit of white highlights. We painted a little bit of blue. So that's our color information. And tech generally speaking, that's going to be RGB information. So it's going to take up all three of those channels. However, when I go in here and we choose like metallic, and let's go back here to the skull, you're going to see where we have dirt and pitting and stuff, that's not going to be metallic. It's not going to render uh, shiny metal, but where it's white, it's going to render metallic. This can all be packed in a grayscale image. So just like when we were in Photoshop, and we were looking at these channels, uh, we can pack a roughness map in here, we can pack a metallicity map in here, we can pack an AO map in here, because that's just black and white information, so we can pack it into these channels and make it a much more organized process. So essentially you have one image that contains three channels worth of information. So when you send this to your external resource here, so we go into configuration here, we're going to send this over to UE4, Unreal is going to look at this and go, oh, Here's the occlusion rough, roughness metallic file. So I know that the red channel is going to be AO, green channel is going to be roughness, blue channel is going to be metallic. If it's not set up that way, you can set up Unreal to read these channels however you'd like. Uh, same with any other uh, rendering program. You can tell it, hey, when you look at the red channel, uh, make, put that into the AO and all that good stuff. Now, these things over here, this mesh and texture set, we'll go ahead and talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and export these textures because I want to uh, render this in another program you know, be that V-Ray or go into a render, uh, into an engine like Unreal or Unity, or maybe you want to go into Redshift or Keyshot or whatever. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take this into Marmoset. And just so we can talk about some options here, I'm going to go to the PBR Metal Rough preset here. I'm going to go up here to the top. I'm going to click this Duplicate preset so we have a PBR Metal Rough copy. I can just double click this and we'll just go ahead and call this Marmoset. So when you go to the export here, you can click down, and at the very bottom here, you're going to see we have a Marmoset preset, so we can go ahead and check that. For right as it is set up right now, if we open up, say, the skull material here, you're going to see it's going to export a base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive. Uh, if we go into configuration, we have our base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive, and it's going to throw these into a separate channel. So instead of doing it packed, like Unreal has it, where an RGB image has roughness, metallic, and I think ambient occlusion all in one, these are all split out. and that's perfectly fine. We can we can work with that in Marmoset. One thing we are missing that we want to use in Marmoset, actually there's probably a couple things in here, but one of them is going to be your AO. 
You can use your input map ambient occlusion or your mess map ambient occlusion or your mixed AO. If you've gone through and you've painted any AO, something we didn't really talk about in this particular series, but if you've generated any additional AO through well, your texturing process, uh, that would be your mixed AO. We didn't really do that, so I'm just going to say our mesh map ambient occlusion is probably fine. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's make a new grayscale image. I'm going to drop my ambient occlusion in here. I'm going to say, go ahead and throw that into the gray channel. And now you're going to see this purple ambient occlusion is now this purple gray channel. If you do an RGB image, this would be something like, you see this RGB for your base color? That would be something like you would put your base color in there and say RGB channels. You can always switch this. You can right click, or you can left click, and you can say split into RG and B. So now you have access to the RG and B channels. So if you didn't want to put your base color in here, you wanted to pack something, you could say pack your roughness in here, gray channel, opacity in here, gray channel, metallic in here, gray channel, and now these corresponding colors go to these different channels. If you wanted to do an alpha channel along with this, you could do an RGB plus an alpha channel, or we can just go ahead and uh, click these little X's to kill these. Uh, we can also click this and we can say, you can clear a channel out, and they can also collapse this back down to an RGB. But I don't think there's a way to add an alpha to this. So we have to go up here, we'll do an RGBA, we'll go ahead and kill this one. So RGB, we could put in a base color, and then maybe you say you wanted to pack your opacity into that alpha, so you can just drag that on there and then now your opacity is uh, in the alpha of your uh, base color, which is actually kind of useful. And in fact, if we look up here, that's exactly how this base color is set up. So we'll go ahead and kill that. Uh, now, as far as naming this, right now, this one is just named grayscale. So we'll go ahead and call this ambient occlusion, because that's what we put in here. And you're also going to see you have uh, dollar sign mesh and dollar sign texture set. If you click on the dollar sign over here, that's going to, uh, you can append a I mean, it could be a sub prefix or a suffix, depending on where you want to put this. Uh, but you have project, mesh, and texture set. So your project name is what your file name is saved as. Your texture set is going to be whatever your texture set is named. And your mesh name is whatever your mesh name is when you import it, or whatever your FBX name is. Um, let's go ahead and go out of this. At any, at any time, you can go through here and you can say, you know what, I don't need underscore mat on this. I, do need, I just need skull on my textures. Just double click it, and then just get rid of these mats. You don't need to... This is, is actually pretty useful. Um, it didn't used to be like this, but just double click these, and now all your texture set names will be a uh, skull as opposed to skull underscore mat. A little bit more organized. So we'll go back in here. We'll go to File, Export Textures, uh, Configuration, and it reorganized itself. So now Marmoset is uh, alphabetically ordered underneath L. So the rest of these textures are going to export the mesh name and the texture set name and what the file is, a misophyte normal metallic. Um, actually, the height, I don't think I really need, so I'm going to go ahead and kill that one, just just for our Marmoset prefix, prefix preset that we're working on. Um, the texture set I like to have. The mesh name, not that important. So I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to delete that mesh name. Oops. Now, I want mesh over here. So instead of deleting that, I can go ahead and say Control-X to uh, cut that, and then uh, we can say, grab that texture set, we can copy that, and then we can just paste this right here, and then we'll go ahead and put a little shift underscore right there. Uh, if, it, if you need access to these, and you're like, oh, what is texture set? Or, oh, I want my mesh name back. What is it again? You can just click this dollar sign, do the mesh name, and now you've got dollar sign mesh. You can do like do a suffix in this case. Uh, but I don't want to do that, just in case you wanted to. So now we have this all set up. we got base color, roughness, metallic, normal, and miss of a cambi occlusion. I have a feeling we're probably going to need some scattering information. Well, if you had your thickness into your um, scattering channel, uh, then you would probably want to export that, or you could even go in here. And if you did in, like any levels on your thickness, like we were doing earlier in the series, then you could probably just do your you know, scattering map into here. But honestly, I think the teeth, we're just going to use that as just a pure value, even, in, even externally. So I'm not going to bother putting that in there. Uh, the emissive map, we definitely need and that's going to be RGB. So if you wanted to do like red, green, or, uh, you know, we had we did orange eyes or blue eyes, or if you want to do a mixture of a bunch of different colors, uh, you want that to be RGB, not necessarily just a grayscale. Unless your engine calls for it to be a grayscale, and then it's going to be driven by the shader, uh, is going to drive the colors, in which case you would want that to be grayscale. You wouldn't want to pay the cost of three channels worth of information when you can get away with just using one grayscale channel. But anyway, I think this will work. And as we go into Marmoset and we start playing around with the settings, there may be things we can come back and change, and that's not a big deal. You know, this Marmoset setting, uh, this Marmoset configuration is always going to be here. So we can always go back uh, when we go to export texture, go into configuration, make any changes we want. And then when we go to export, we'll just drag this 
choose this Marmoset preset. Uh, I like a PNG. If you want lossless, PNG, Targa, and TIFF are pretty good choices. Um, of course, JPEG is going to be a little cheaper, but uh, you may get some issues. And if you ever get any banding on your normal map or your AO, changing this to 16 bits uh, might help that a bit. Uh, but if we check these little down boxes now, they're going to see we're going to export the skull, uh, all of these, skull, iris, eyes, and teeth, all of our texture sets are going to get exported. If you ever want to just export one thing, just go through here and uncheck these, uh, obviously. Um, and then checking these down, you can go through here. You can actually override the padding in here if you wanted to. And another huge thing is right now they're all going to export at the default document size, is the working size. Uh, when we baked our maps, I think we baked these at different settings, like the skull we baked at 4K, so let's go ahead and drop that down to 4096. Um, and you can also go, even if you baked it at 2048 and you're like, you know what, I probably just need a 1024 for the eyes and a 1024 uh, for the teeth, or maybe, you know what, let's keep the eyes at 2048, and you can always change this as well, and that's all fine. Uh, before we export, you can, you, know, you can change your format, you can change the bit depth and then over here we have our configuration and one last thing we're going to see where this is going to go um, by default it's probably going to go to a painter folder i'm going to go to my apinator file i'm going to go in here to a new folder call it marmoset and we'll go ahead and select that folder and then we'll hit export and then we'll go through and export our textures and there we go so you can open the folder if you want to and that's actually kind of useful because you can just drag and drop uh, these files in here we can see here's all of the files so in it again here's our eyes because it was our texture set and then our uh, underscore mesh name or our texture set so texture set underscore map type and then we got iris and then skull and then teeth and we're ready to take that into our external rendering program